Hey ladies, welcome to today's uh, Women Thrive Virtual Summit. Amazing to have you all here. My name is Katie Kalella. I'm part of the Women in Business team and I'm going to be your host for today when I speak to the amazing Ines Padar. I hope I pronounced that properly. Um, and we're here today with Ines, who is an absolute expert in her field, which is imposter syndrome. And I know tons of you have signed up for today because this is something that affects absolutely each and every one of us. So Ines is gonna be sharing with us her magic formula to overcome imposter syndrome and get unshakable confidence, charge higher prices and unlock next level business success. So I know absolutely each and every one of us are gonna be hearing more about this and wanting to hear more about this. So let us know in the chat box where you're joining us from, what your business is, which industry you're in, and make sure when you're typing your comments, you do click um, and reply to all panelists and attendees so that everybody gets to see your comments. And the more engagement, the better. Lifts up the energy, and it's great to hear your thoughts as well as we go. Um, so before we actually get started, if you can screenshot and take photos, and chuck the images all over social media and let everyone know that we are live right now and get as many ladies on and come and join us live as possible. That would be amazing. You can tag us in at Women in Business Club um, on Instagram or Facebook and make sure you're using the hashtag um, Women Thrive Summit. And let's, let's spread the word and get as many people on and joining us as possible. Um, so I'm going to leave you to it and I'm going to hand straight over to Ines. Thank you so much for joining us live today. So hello everyone, thank you so much for being here. This is very exciting. More than 400 uh, people actually signed up to attend today, so thank you for being here. Uh, in a few moments, I'm going to start my presentation on how we can overcome imposter syndrome and get that confidence, charge higher prices, and be comfortable in your business. Now, uh, I'm seeing a lot of people joining from everywhere around the world. This is fantastic. So as Katie said, let us know what you're doing, where you come from, and I will, um, I will answer all of your questions at the end of the presentation in about 30 minutes, but if something is very unclear, just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to pause and clarify. So let me share my screen with you so I can get started with the presentation. And you guys let me know if this is working. Okay. So Katie, if you could just confirm that everyone can see the presentation. that we've Absolutely. Asked. You're all good in this. Absolutely yeah. perfect. So the magic formula to overcome imposter syndrome and get that unshakable confidence, charge higher prices, and unlock, unlock next level business success. So I'm going to start with an agenda just so you guys can know what is coming up. So first a bit more about me, then what is imposter syndrome and why we care. And then I will teach you the magic formula to conquer imposter syndrome, which consists in mastering three pillars, which is eliminating blocks and sabotage, building self-confidence, and building self-worth. And after that, I'll tell you a few mechanisms you can use right now, because I'm an action person, on how you can turn your mind into a success mechanism, and we will end with questions and answers. So a bit more about me, my, nest, my name is Ines. I am the imposter syndrome terminator. Um, I was born and raised in Switzerland where I live and I've got a bachelor in management, a master's in accounting and finance. And I am the founder of NeuroPeak and of the imposter syndrome terminator programs. Um, I have trained in RTT and EFT and I also use in my practice NLP and CBT when it is useful. And last but not least, I am a no BS person who likes no BS solutions. So that's what all of my programs all are about because I think that women deserve solutions that work fast. Now, some of you might be wondering how the hell does, sometime, does someone who studied accounting and finance end up being the imposter syndrome terminator? Well, I am glad you asked, and to make a very long story short, unfortunately, I, I don't have that much time to explain. Um, when I was in, studying in, in my master's degree, I was about 23, I got depression for the fifth time, as if depression once isn't enough. And I had kind of a light bulb moment in my mind 
that said that if I don't do something about this today or now, it will just go on and on and on. And I, have a, I had a very firm belief at that time that the problem was in my subconscious mind because I had thought so much about it but found no solution. So I found an alternative therapist who focused on the power of the subconscious mind as well as releasing energetic blocks in the body. And it worked. Three months later, I was depression-free. I worked a lot on myself outside of our sessions. And during all of that period, uh, while I was doing my master's, I was also working in a big financial firm in Switzerland. And what I saw is that so many amazing, talented women were holding themselves back in business because they didn't believe in themselves or they thought they were not good enough or not competent enough or they didn't, air at, they didn't dare ask for promotion because they felt they weren't qualified enough. And I had experienced the same symptoms until I realized that that was imposter syndrome. And luckily, when I worked with my therapist on depression, the imposter syndrome kind of left and I further worked on myself until it was completely gone, sorry. And that was the moment when I decided that finance was not for me. It didn't fulfill me. What I really wanted to do was help women conquer imposter syndrome so they can use their full potential. Because I know what it feels like to have your mind working against you and making you feel terrible when you could be feeling great. So now what is imposter syndrome? A lot of people refer it as persistently feeling like a fraud among the real deal people, which is not true, but that's how you feel. We're doubting ourselves and our competence despite our achievements. And if any of you can relate, let me know in the comments, please. But the typical example is that you have nailed that next job, or you have entered this amazing program at the university, or maybe you succeeded in sport, and instead of being proud of yourself, you kind of just say, well, it's normal. It's normal or I got lucky, and you don't really take ownership of your achievements. And imposter syndrome is pretty much any sentence that starts with, who am I to? Who am I to profile myself as an expert? Who am I to charge higher prices, etc." Now, the symptoms that I hear the most about when I work with clients or talk with people who have imposter syndrome is feeling like a fraud among real deal people, or feeling very uncomfortable asking to be paid what you are worth, uh, lack of trust and self-beliefs that makes us overthink and procrastinate because you're thinking, oh, I don't know enough, I should be more skilled. So you want to get more knowledge and learn more and you kind of overthink and don't do anything. And being visible is scary because you feel you might be judged or that people won't care about what you have to say. You don't feel like you're qualified enough yet, which very often causes you to get more diplomas and more training before you feel ready. Now, why do we actually care? Well, we care because imposter syndrome has the power to keep you stuck in business for several reasons. First of all, you might miss out on opportunities. Best example I could give you is that if you had a speaking opportunity like I have today, when someone asks you to be an expert or a speaker in your field, you might think, oh, no, 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 I'm not qualified enough. There are so many people out there who know better, so you could miss that opportunity. You'll probably undercharge, so you're making less income for the same amount of hours you're working. It feels uncomfortable being yourself. You're probably going to waste some money on training that you actually don't need, and this is a big one too. I have some of my clients, before we worked together, who spent thousands of dollars on extra training, extra certification that didn't change anything to the way they felt. Fear of visibility, of putting yourself out there, and in the day and age of social media, that's how you can easily get new clients, so it can really hurt your business, as well as procrastination. So if any of these resonates with you ladies, let me know in the comment, I would love to know if this rings a bell. And most importantly, I kept this one for the end because it used to frustrate me so much. You will not use your full potential. So what is more frustrating than knowing that as an ambitious woman, 
you have the potential to do so many amazing things, but at the same time, your mind is kind of working against you and holding you back and giving you this dialogue that you're not good enough. Now, we've talked enough about what we don't want, which is imposter syndrome. So let's talk about the magic formula to conquer it. Ladies, you deserve the best. This is why I left finance, to push you out there and to make you know inside of you that you can do this. It's time for imposter syndrome to bite the dust. And guess what? It's actually easier to do than you might think because no one was born with imposter syndrome. And you can actually just take a look at babies. For all, so for all of the women here who have kids or who have nieces, nephews, or very young siblings, when you look at tiny, tiny babies, no baby was born an imposter. Actually, quite the opposite. They arrive on the planet and they are like, hi, I'm here. They scream when they want something. They love being the center of attention. They demand stuff and they get it. And most importantly, a baby, it's normal, doesn't know how to do anything. They don't have any skills or qualifications. But despite that, they feel very good about themselves. In the very beginning, they can't speak. They can't talk. That's the same thing, sorry. They can't hold their own heads. They can't walk. And most of the time, they have applesauce in their hair and a dirty diaper. But despite that, they have full confidence in themselves. And they want to be the center of attention. And the great news about this is that all of you who's listening today already have this ability inside of you to not care about other people think, to not care about what other people think, and to have that perfect self-confidence. And all you need to do now is to get rid of the bullshit that other people gave you. So why, what do I actually mean by this? For example, let's say that you were a kid in school and you were about to give a presentation or in high school or in college, and you were very satisfied with your presentation and with the content. And what happens is that you present, and maybe the teacher was having a bad day and makes a very hurtful comment. Well, now in your mind, something is happening that's that is called a blueprint. You think to yourself, well, I thought that my presentation was amazing and I was very proud of that but apparently no one around me likes it. And this forms a very powerful subconscious pattern or blueprint that tells you, well, you think you're good, but you actually aren't. And you carry that for the rest of your life if you don't do anything about it. Another example that I used to have very bad is I was in a very competitive university. It's called the Harvard of Switzerland. And I had that feeling that every student around me was more motivated, smarter, more driven, more competent, and I really felt like the dumbest person in the room. So I started doubting myself. I started asking me these questions of, what am I even doing here? Because everyone around me seems so much motivated. So if, if any of these resonate, resonate, ladies, let me know in the comments. So what I want to say through this is that you were not born like that, but life events happen that make you develop a set of limiting beliefs. Another very frequent example could be your parents saying when you were a kid, oh, what's wrong with you? You never get it right. And now you have this feeling that something is wrong with you or that you can't get it right even though that is not true. Well, after working with women from all around the world, I noticed that despite the different cultural backgrounds, Despite the different jobs they were taking, different cultures and different countries, every one of my clients had the same problems. Each time they were describing their symptoms, they always said the same thing. And that's what allowed me to develop this very powerful three by three model that if you master it, you just can't have imposter syndrome. And I have worked with women in Latin America, in Canada, in the US, Germany, Africa, Thailand, New Zealand, you name it, it's always the same symptoms that show up. So now I'm going to get into the juicy stuff, ladies. I hope you're ready. Let me know in the comments. So pillar number one is eliminating blocks 
and sabotage. And that is very, very important because that is what is going to create a clean slate for you to build very solid foundation upon. So what do I mean with eliminating blocks? Well, first of all, eliminating subconscious blocks, getting rid of procrastination, and learn to follow your intuition. Once that's done, you can start mastering pillar two, which is self-confidence. And I've also broken it down in three parts, which is knowing that you are competent enough, building self-belief, and love, be, loving to be visible. And once this is done, you can finally enter phase three, which is self-worth. More precisely, getting paid what you are worth, having healthy boundaries, and being yourself. So ladies, if you want to screenshot, now is the time to do it, because this is the magic formula to conquer imposter syndrome. Now, some of you might be saying, oh my God, there is so many things I need to do. Well, no, I would see it in a different way. The problem with imposter syndrome is that many of my clients or prospects or people in my Facebook group say, well, intellectually, I know that I'm competent enough, but I don't feel that way and I don't know where to start. So let me know in the comments if that resonates with you. And this is the framework. It's a step-by-step -step process that if you follow it and you take care of these nine items individually, once you have them all, you can't have imposter syndrome anymore. It's just not possible. So you know exactly what you need to do right now. So let's say that you already like being visible. You don't have a problem going live, but your problem is more procrastination. Well, you can separate your priorities. So now I'm going to go a bit de in deeper detail of how you can do this more precisely. Unfortunately, I don't have time to cover everything, but I do cover all of these in my Facebook group in live streams. So, oh, and I forgot to say, once you master those three pillars, that is when you can unleash your full potential. Now, number one, which is eliminating blocks and sabotage. How can you pinpoint your hidden blocks? Uh, let me tell you that this is a big one. At least a third of my clients have it, and I used to have it too. And my question to you is, and maybe you need a few moments to reflect, is success associated with pain? Because our brains at a instinctive level, if this is newer science, are programmed to move us away from pain and move us closer to pleasure. So why do I mean with success being associated with pain? For example, maybe as a kid, your parents were very successful in business but they were never at home. So you suffered from the fact that they weren't around. And now you've formed this blueprint in your mind that says, well, if I am successful, I will have to sacrifice family time. And this has the power to sabotage you in business. Another example could be um, that when you got very successful, either in sports or in team events or in the office, either colleagues or friends of yours got a bit jealous got a bit frustrated so then you had to deal with the pain of losing friends or having colleagues kind of talking shit about you and that is very painful too and your brain will not want to reproduce that so my question to you and please take a few moments to think about this because it's usually hidden in our subconscious minds is there any association painful association with success so which the way the one i used to have is I thought to myself, well, what if I'm much more successful than my parents? They might feel like a failure, that they, yeah, they failed because their kid was more successful than them. And since I'm very close to my family, that's not something I wanted to do. And it was really holding me back. Number two is follow your intuition. And I know that in our environments, sometimes following your intuition, especially in a corporate environment or a very kind of competitive environment, intuition is like, woo woo, it's for the energy healers or the people who walk around in Birkenstocks. No, 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 no. I know it's not always easy to do this, but your intuition is your most powerful asset because when you follow your intuition, you're being true to yourself and your values and your gut feeling. 
And when you're true to yourself, when you're consistent with yourself, that's a very powerful way to eliminate imposter syndrome. And the way that imposter syndrome could make you not follow your intuition is let's say that you are a, I don't know, a coach. And your marketing team has told you, well, you have to post on Instagram every day and go live five times a week. Well, maybe you don't like that. Or maybe you think that your niche would not like that. Your intuition is telling you not to do it, but imposter syndrome is messing with your brain. So you think to yourself, I better follow the expert's advice. And you are going against your own values. And that will backfire. It will like slap you on the face and make you feel even more like an imposter. So follow your intuition. All of my clients tell me, your intuition is insane. And this is not something I could have learned during my training. It's just that I tune into my heart. And this allows me to ask the right questions, which really helps my clients. Now, self-confidence. Self-confidence can be a scary one. I'm going to have a bit of water here because I'm getting excited. And the ladies are on fire here as well in this. The amount of support you're getting is amazing. Everybody's relating to everything you're saying. I'm glad. I'm very glad you like them, ladies. So knowing that you're competent enough is like, it's a lot of people say self-confidence. It takes years to build. It's so hard. You need to have a mindset coach, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. You can do it right now. When you, you stop that program with one easy tool, and I'm sure you've never heard of this before, so you let me know in the comments if you've actually heard this tool to build your self-confidence, is keep the promises you make to yourself. So let me give you a juicy example. Let's say it's Sunday night and I'm preparing my plan for the week, for my schedule and my to-do list. So of course, as an ambitious, driven woman who likes to do a lot of things, I'm going to put working out five times a week and doing all that admin that has been sitting on my desk and catching up with that friend I haven't talked with in two months and I will post consistently on Facebook and go live three times and start my website and launch this program and the list goes on and on and on. And especially when we have imposter syndrome, one of the things we tend to do is setting very high expectations for ourselves. We're wanting everything to be perfect because we feel we are not good enough. So now you have this mile-long to-do list. The week goes by. Life happens. Your, your cat puked on the carpet. Your kids were stopping you from working properly, so you didn't get to do everything that was on your to-do list. How do you feel on Friday when you didn't even do half of the stuff that was on your to-do list? Well, you feel like shit. Let's be honest here. And you start saying stuff to yourself like, I'm a failure. I can't even do what I said I was going to do. It wasn't even that hard. Why am I not more efficient? And all of this dialogue is ruining your self-confidence. So less is more. I want you to reduce that to-do list significantly and have an, an item list of stuff that you can do that you'll feel it, this is going to be so easy. I have way enough time to do all of this. And once you actually do this and you take off all of the things on your to-do list, you will feel so good about yourself. Been there, done that, trust me. You have this sense of empowerment, of knowing that you can trust yourself. And when you say you do something, you actually do it. So keep the promises you make to yourself. If you wake up one morning and you have all of this fantasy of, I'm going to read one book this week, but you know it might not happen, don't say that to yourself. Be honest and say, I don't have time to read this book. I will do that in one month when, or two months or six months when all this craziness is over. Now, number two, feeling comfortable about being visible. So I could give you a ton of advice of you have to train, you have to go live or speak in front of your friends, but there is something that worked with me because I didn't like to be visible. Now, I couldn't care less. I actually like to go live, which could help you a lot. So you let me know in the comments, lady, if this resonates. So there are two types of people in this world. The kind of people who feel good about themselves and the kind of people who feel terrible about themselves. Now, these are two distinct categories. So let's just say you post on social media 
and someone trashes you or says something nasty in the comments, those people feel terrible about themselves. They actually feel so bad that they're trying to drag you down there with them so they can have a bit of more company wherever they are in their low vibration. Whereas people who feel good about themselves, if they disagree with you or your content or they didn't really like it, either they won't say anything or they will have the courtesy to DM you or have a private conversation about it. And once you realize this, that people who troll or who say nasty things are people who are kind of miserable and feel terrible about themselves and frustrated. And you know, they take their phone and they type some rude comments and they feel so great about being rude. Well, do, ladies, do you want to give your power away and your business success away to some sort of person who feels so bad about themselves they have nothing else to do? Well, I hope the answer to that question is no. Let's move on. Self-worth. Now, be yourself. You might have heard of the imposter vicious circle. And here is how it goes. So we have imposter syndrome. I used to have it. So since we don't really feel good about ourselves, we get this brilliant idea. Oh, I'm going to look at industry experts or competition who seem to have everything under control. And I'm going to do a bit more of what they are doing. So now you are emulating or kind of copying some of the things they are doing, but the more you do what they are doing and the less you feel like you're being yourself and the less you're being true to yourself, the more you feel like a fraud and the more you feel like a fraud, it's very uncomfortable. So you're going to see what other people do and you do a bit more of what they do. You are less yourself and it's a vicious circle that goes round and round and round. So don't try to imitate other people because your biggest asset is being yourself. And actually, this a very simple example of this is when you go on Instagram and you look at influencers or the Kardashians or all of those fitness bloggers who have like a dream body, the posts that go, that the posts that go viral are not like the picture-perfect post. It's the cellulite post. It's the stretch mark post. It's when they're super bloated after eating something that they can't really digest. And that's what fires up because people connect with your flaws. People connect with your vulnerabilities. They can't connect with perfection because they can't relate to it. So ladies, be yourself. Let me know in the, in the comment if this makes sense because when you're being yourself and unapologetically, unapologetically you, you're going to attract the best and repel the rest. And you want to attract clients to you that actually resonate with who you are. And last but not least, how to charge what you are worth. So this is also a big concern among many people. And I could tell, talk about money blocks for two hours. But a lot of you have probably heard of money blocks before and did some introspection or, or getting over your money, gotten over your money blocks. I'm going to have a slightly different approach because again, been there, done that. Do you have a receiving block, which is not the same as a money block? So a money block is a set of beliefs, for example, that money is for evil people, or as soon as I get money, it goes away, or if I get rich, no one is going to like me. That is like a money block. But what about a receiving block? So my question to you ladies is, do you tend to give more than you receive? And when I say give, it's not necessarily physical things, but it could be emotional attention. So are you the member of the family who takes care of the kids, of the sick aunt, of the grandma, of the partner who's complaining? You're giving, 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 giving. Attendant, attending to everybody else's needs, but when you need support, the support is not really there. Or maybe you are one of these people who really supports your friends when they're going through a breakup or through a difficult period in their life, but when shit hits the fan on your side, you realize that not as many people are giving that attention back. And what happens when you do this? Again, there is a subconscious belief that forms and that says, well, I never get, or I always give much more than I receive. And this is so powerful in the negative way 
because as a business owner, you serve, you serve, you serve, you get a ton of, you get, you give a ton of value to your clients, but you don't equally get compensated. And I used to have that big time because in my family, I'm a very, very sensitive person. So I was always worried about everyone else's needs. And I used to put my own happiness at the last place. And when I wasn't getting as much money as I wanted to, I said, well, this is weird because I don't have a money block. So what's going on? And I had a receiving block. I didn't feel worthy of receiving as much as I gave out. So I got rid of that, boom, at the subconscious level, gone. Now it's awesome. But please, ladies, take a few moments to ask yourself that question. Okay, I'm going to drink again because I'm getting so excited. Okay, bear with me. Now, how you can turn your mind into a success mechanism. You probably already heard many times that your thoughts influence your reality. And it could sound a bit woo-woo, like how do my thoughts influence my reality? So I'm going to give you a bit of neuroscience behind it or how it actually works. Everything starts with a thought. And a thought triggers a feeling in your body or in your mind. And once you have a feeling, it will determine the action you take and the action determines your reality. So basic example, the thought is, everyone is going to judge me on social media. How do you feel? Well, you feel anxious, you feel afraid, you feel nervous. And what is probably going to happen is that you don't go live on social media because what might happen? And your reality is that if you don't go live, people can't find you or people can't relate to you and you don't have as many clients as you would like or you're stuck in business. Well, ladies, what happens if you just slightly change that thought to people who judge on social media feel terrible about themselves? I will not give my power to them. Well, how do you feel now? Relief or empowered or at least a bit more confident? You kind of feel positive. So what do you do? You go live on social media. Maybe the few, first few times it's a bit shaky, but that's fine. And some people show interest. And the more you do this, eventually after a few weeks or a few months, you start getting clients because you consistently show up. And the difference between being stuck in business and not getting that income or getting new clients, it all started with the thought. So that's why it's so important to get your thoughts under control. Now, I want you to think about this. Talk to yourself in your mind like you would talk to your best friend. So would you ever tell your best friend, oh, don't go live on Facebook. Everyone is going to hate what you say. I don't think you would say that. I hope not. So what do you do instead? You talk to yourself like you would talk to them because your body will create a physical reaction. This is chemical. It releases, oops, uh, it releases stress hormones or adrenaline or whatever it can release for each thought you have. So you have to choose your thoughts very wisely. And when you change your inner dialogue, you change your life, no exception. Now, another thing I want to address, so I'm a bit running out of time, but I'm going to have time to finish. Perfection is stagnation. And I know that many people who have imposter syndrome are perfectionists because they feel like they need to compensate for all of the skills they don't have. And I know that because I used to be like that. So just imagine me, little Ines. I was writing my master thesis about a pretty complex topic, psychology of the subprime crisis. And I spent one day, this is ridiculous, one day rewriting one single paragraph that was like this long. And I was freaking out that if I didn't rewrite it, my supervisor would feel like, would think it's bullshit. The truth is the supervisor would have never, ever seen any difference. And that's how I developed the 80% rule. If you do something and you think it's 80% finished, it's good to go. Because in reality, it's probably 95 to 99 to 100%. So if you did a video for your website, just random thought, and you are 80% happy with it, not quite happy, but 80% happy, it's good to go. If you write a blog post and it's not perfect, but it's 80% good enough, it's good to go. If you just came out of training, hypnotherapy, yoga, cooking class, and you feel like you know 80% enough, but you still need 20%, 
don't throw out your money out the window to get that extra 20%, you will never get it. It's a psychological thing. If you're 80% ready, you are ready to go. And what I want you to remember, girl, is that you can grow as you go. You don't have to be perfect right now. The most important is growing as you go, and you will learn that through experience. Now, the fastest way that you can rewire your mind for success is using the power of the subconscious mind. And I believe this to be an absolute truth. Some people can disagree with me, but I'm telling you this based on how I overcame depression. I had tried so many conscious stuff and it didn't work. Or it worked, but so slow that I couldn't really see a noticeable difference. And the way that our subconscious minds work is like, typical example, between one and two years old, you learn how to walk. And that stays ingrained in your mind for the rest of your life. So you never have to learn that skill again, which is great because we can walk. But what if at a very young age, you got the message, I'm not good enough. Well, that program is going to go around and around in your mind unless you change it at a subconscious level. So that's why I created my own neural peak uh, process that used the power of your mind to peak, which is pinpoint the root cause of the problem, eliminate it, activate the success mechanism we already have within us, and kickstart your journey to success. Last but not least, now that you know all of this, you can start conquering imposter syndrome today for free. So you can download my guide at inespadar.ca slash your guide. That's, that's a step-by-step -step guide you can use right now to start conquering imposter syndrome. And I would like you to join the Facebook group. Now, I know what, you, I know what you're thinking. Another Facebook group. And you go in there and people try to sell you marketing or boost your Instagram following or God knows what. No, this Facebook group, I created it with one and one only goal is to help women thrive in business because I've been there. I've been depressed. I used to be an imposter. I know how frustrating it is that your own mind is holding you back. So all of the content that I didn't have time to go through, which is all of the nine pillars, I will go live about those and go into further details in my Facebook group. So I would absolutely love to see you there. And they are giveaways for people who engage, for people who share. Uh, you can have access to some free coaching with me. And if you want to follow me on the gram, it's just at Ines Padar. So now I'm going to answer all of your burning questions. I'm going to leave this a few more seconds so you can write it down and then I will stop the screen sharing so you can actually see my face. <laughs> Which is always welcome. <laughs> we have oh. had so many comments honestly the engagement's been phenomenal everything you were saying people kept saying you are reading my mind you are speaking directly to me <laughs> everything you were saying it was literally touching exactly how people were feeling uh, you've got so much wonderful feedback you can see that they you know the comments for yourself now but um, thank you for some excellent and helpful content um, someone else from Switzerland Switzerland is here um, this is amazing thank you you're wonderful I love this thank you people coming over and following you on Instagram okay. uh, and some people have seen you on Instagram live as well um, some people just feel a lot of relief you know even in this short presentation They've, be, they've been taking some amazing um, pointers and they feel they've got more from, you know, this short um, talk today than they have, you know, with hours of other coaching and everything else. So the response has been phenomenal. Um, yeah, and all the ladies just saying, you know, all the pressure we put on ourselves around perfectionism and, and these things. And I love the 80% kind of rule. Yeah. I'm very much there with you. I don't like to watch anything I do on no. video I don't watch it I just it's done it's still me at the end of the day I'm not going to be able to change that and I just do it and that's my top tip um because I just think you like you said you'll procrastinate all day long um oh. otherwise <laughs> but yeah um what have we got Imperf imperfect action is better than no action mm -hmm. let's see if we've got any actual questions loads of women saying um it's like you are talking my life living about my life um, I'm in there I, I used to be I, I like to say the premium imposter 
I had a shopping <laughs> list of symptoms of imposter syndrome. And I would have freaked out if you told me two years ago that I would be speaking in front of so many people, I would have freaked out. But now I'm like, yeah, game on, let's do this. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, what have we got? Let me see if that's actual any questions. Someone else was saying they always thought their story showed weakness, but it was really interesting when you talked about actually showing your flaws and showing the real you is what people um, relate to. Um, I follow a couple of people on Instagram. You, you know, you hit the nail on the head. And all the stuff that they show that is the imperfect, the raw, the real, the behind the scenes, that's the stuff that I totally get drawn to over and over, way above all the perfect and filtered life. Um, and I think that, you know, that's all of us. You hit the nail on the head with it. Yeah, there was this very famous um, Insta fitness woman. She lives in Australia. Her name is Tammy Hembrow, and she basically has a very big booty, so that's why she she has a lot of followers, but when her Instagram exploded was when she had, she was carrying one of her kids and his foot was on her stomach and it mm -hmm. was, and you could see like the loose skin from the pregnancy yeah. and when her Instagram went, Ooh. Oh, I've seen it. Yes, I have. I've seen it. I did. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I love her, uh, her account and also Chessy Hawks I really really like she's very similar she kind of shares you know when you sit down we all have roles in our body again very much body confidence um absolutely amazing and that's why she is so successful because she shares what we might look upon as flaws um but yeah okay we have some questions coming in um so what if your constant battle is not trusting your intuition not knowing not knowing your intuition is what is speaking to you vicious cycle that keeps me stuck in procrastination okay so tuning in in your intuition, would, I would say, is a learning process because in our society, intuition is woo woo, especially depending on which fields you work in. What I did is, as I started working with more of the same type of people, I start noticing patterns. Okay. And I start noticing those patterns. Instead of going through the traditional therapy I've been trained in, I ask the questions that I knew would lead them in the right direction. So it's definitely a skill you can acquire with practice. Okay. Um, and then if your gut tells you th something, listen to it. Fantastic. If you're walking down a street and you, you, know, you don't feel like you should be doing this, don't. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what is your best advice to get rid of limiting beliefs on a subconscious level? That's, I wouldn't say it's a tough one, but usually it's easier with another person if you're not aware of the problem. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, after a car accident. Well, it's pretty easy to know what the problem is. It's the car accident that is triggering the PTSD. So you actually know exactly where to go to get rid of the problem. And then you can just either take a therapist or do EFT, they have a website with a ton of information on that and get rid of the problem. If you have something that's not going well in your life, like a money block or a receiving block, and you have no idea what might have triggered it, I'm going to be very honest, it's difficult to get there without another person helping you because I've tried and it with limiting results. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, okay, one quick question. What if your fear in charging higher prices comes from you being afraid you might not be able to deliver a certain level of value as you're still mastering those new skills to deliver your business due to a career transition? Okay, I hear that a lot. Who am I to charge higher prices? I don't have the experience. Um, there is a paradox. We feel like the more we charge, the more we have to deliver to the clients and the more pressure is on our shoulders. And mm -hmm. I have that too. The truth is that the higher prices you charge, the easier the client is going to work to, the easier it is to go, it is to work with that client, sorry, because the level of their commitment is so much higher that they actually take responsibility for their own transformation rather than putting that burden on you. And when you have lower prices, you kind of attract people who shop around for prices and who are very quick to blame and complain rather than taking ownership of their own transformation. So I know it's very scary. Yep. In my guide, in the inespadar.ca stress your guide, I have a step-by-step -step process on how you can gradually increase your prices. 
Fantastic. So go and grab that lady. So we need to wrap up um, because we're at the end of our slot, but I'm sure every one of you will agree that was an absolutely amazing, very, very powerful talk. So thank one you. Last so much. On procrastination and that's an easy one. Okay, go ahead. Any steps other than making realistic goals to help stop procrastination? Yeah, do what you hate first. Mm. When you do what you hate first thing in the morning, you will feel so proud of yourself and don't wait for motivation before you take action because you will wait forever. Just do it even if you don't want to do it first thing in the morning. I completely agree. I'm a fan of doing that. And the days I do it, I feel so much better for just doing it rather than the days that I don't. And you fight with yourself with the internal dialogue all day about it and then you still have to do it. So there's no point putting it off. Um, so absolutely amazing, Valley, today. Thank you so, so much. Um, and if you... If you haven't caught the rest of the week or you want to book in and watch more of the rest of the week and you haven't got your paid ticket yet, of course, you can still upgrade. Um, you have access to an absolute ton of goodies in our value vault, well over $1,000. There's lots of value being provided from our speakers. There's more assets, uh, mini courses, books, everything you want to get your hands on and um, all the presentations that we've been watching as well throughout the week all you need to do is pop over to the hay summit um, there's links in all the emails and upgrade your ticket now and of course you're going to get lifetime replay to all of those as well and before i go if you haven't checked out the women in business membership members club um, we've got a special discount just for you ladies which is the code thrive which will give you access to the membership for just a dollar a day to be a member um, and I'm part of the team so I get to see all this incredible content behind the scenes um, and there's lots more of this amazing value from all our experts mentors and coaches um, for just a dollar a day so go and check that out as well I have popped Oh, Ramonda just popped the link in for me as well. And the coupon is Thrive. So go and check that out. I'm going to have to leave you um, uh, ready for the next uh, speaker. But yes, thank you so much, Ines, today. Absolutely amazing. Loved, loved, thank loved, you loved. For everyone attending. It was great to have you here. Fantastic. Thank you. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Bye.